As lockdown has eased and people return to work, some are finding themselves in difficult or dangerous situations. In this week's episode of The Lock-In, we talk to a workers' rights organiser to find out more about your rights. Check it out. Just because it might be illegal for your employer to do something doesn't mean that they're not going to do it. Section 44 of the Employment Rights Act says that um, if you're an employee and you, you believe that there is a real risk of serious and imminent danger um, if you go to work, then you have the right to refuse to go to work. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, it, it's quite likely that it will cover this kind of situation. It just hasn't been tested on the scale where it's, you know, the danger is kind of omnipresent and we're all living in the context of a pandemic. I think instead of immediately saying, I'm enforcing my Section 44 rights and I refuse to come, um, you can frame it in a way that makes it more of a, of a conversation between you and your employer where you are engaging in good faith that you are both trying to create a safe environment. And we have a template on our website that we've worked with an employment lawyer to create that you can use to start that conversation. They, first of all, have an obligation to either provide you with PPE or better in terms of keeping you safe. Um, And they also have an obligation to conduct a risk assessment. If that is not a productive conversation, then you do have to fall back on the rights that are enforced in a court. So you, you can go so far in terms of negotiating with your employer. And again, it's always better to do that collectively than individually. So organize with your colleagues, join a union, join organize, build kind of an infrastructure of support. If you refuse to go to work and you're, it's because you're in serious and imminent danger and your employer fires you, that makes it an unfair dismissal. But you have to then go and enforce that at the employment tribunal. So the way you're protected is through the courts. The average waiting time for an employment tribunal hearing before the pandemic was eight months. Um, since the pandemic, it's probably going to be longer. The other issue is that Even if you win your case in an employment tribunal, um, a third of people who win their cases never get the money that they're owed because their company has since gone into liquidation, um, which again is even more likely in the context of a pandemic. These individual rights that we have are always most difficult to enforce for people who are in precarious conditions because who has eight months of savings? to wait for an employment tribunal decision. It's normally not the people who are going to be forced into work. So I just want to put that into context because you may be protected, but it's one thing having rights in theory and it's another thing being able to enforce them in practice. While we're in lockdown, make sure that you are building the digital and physical infrastructure for a workers' movement, which over the last few decades has kind of been in decline in the UK. So make sure that you are getting involved in as many kind of um, support networks as you can. Join a union, join organize, kind of build out that network. And then in terms of things we should be campaigning on for the future, I think one really key issue that's already kind of gaining momentum is uh, universal basic income, Um, kind of for the duration of the emergency at least, but also probably for the next period of recession, because there's going to be a lot of kind of restructuring of industries. Some some sectors are going to require far fewer workers. Other sectors, um, especially if we have a green recovery, are going to require a lot more workers. That's going to take retraining the workforce. And while all of that is happening, people need to have a basic income. And similarly, with the issues I was talking talking about with enforcing your rights as workers, if people had a basic income, it wouldn't be a concern to have to wait for an employment tribunal decision because you wouldn't be tied to your wage. And so you would be able to enforce the rights you have on paper. Over 5,000 people in the last couple of months have been in contact with the health and safety executive with concerns around safety and COVID-19 in their workplaces. The executive is involved in hundreds of these cases and at least 27 of them has stepped in ordering the implementation of safety measures. 
Last week, campaigning organisation Positive Money released statistics that said that only 12% of the public want to prioritise economic growth over well-being. Despite all of this, the government's march to get Britain back to work isn't stopping. So, it's more important than ever to make sure that you organise collectively and join a union. Thanks. Make sure to tune in next week for another episode and like and subscribe. Thanks.